Jem friends, I'm Major Gaurawadi and you're watching the Chanakya Dialogues. Pakistanis English. always cry. Oh, we lost 80,000 lives in the war on terror. Don't you Pakistanis, don't you always cry and complain? We lost 80,000 lives. Prime Minister Modi is signing accords. He's talking about putting an Indian on the moon. He's talking about billions upon billions of dollars of investment. He's talking about future technologies. Jem friends, I'm Major Gaurawadi and you're watching the Chanakya Dialogues English. Like this video, subscribe to our channel and don't forget to press the bell icon. So friends, you saw the stupendous welcome that Prime Minister Narendra Modi received in the United States of America and especially in the White House. You saw how he was welcomed, the kind of protocol, the kind of security, the kind of warm welcome that he was given. There were almost 7,000 Indian NRIs who were there. There were many people who flew in from Canada. Some people came from Mexico. A lot of uh, uh, American Indians who were there and a lot of people who actually came from India also. And everybody gathered to welcome their Prime Minister because they realized that this was a once in a lifetime moment and a true, true honor being given to Prime Minister Narendra Modi, which the Prime Minister accepted on behalf of 140 crore Indians. That is 1.4 billion of us. Uh, I need not remind you that we are the most populous country on earth and uh, carry that kind of heft with us. Now, uh, Prime Minister Modi was welcomed into the White House Joe Biden and Jill Biden, the President and the First Lady welcomed him. Then the Prime Minister first met, uh, you know, President Joe Biden's cabinet. They were in the first row. That is what the protocol is. So Prime Minister Joe Biden introduced his cabinet to Prime Minister Modi and just behind, uh, you know, uh, his cabinet were members of the Indian delegation. Uh, there was uh, uh, NSA, Mr. Ajit Doval, there was Dr. S. J. Shankar, there was uh, Mr. Taranjit Singh. Who, was, uh, who is currently the ambassador, the Indian ambassador to the United States of America, Mr. Taranjit Singh Sandhu. So all these people were there and other people also from the Prime Minister's office in India, high powered delegation, no doubt. And uh, uh, everybody was there, they met. And Prime Minister Modi was welcomed by a 19 gun salute, ladies and gentlemen, a 19 gun salute. And, uh, you know, he started off and then Modi, Modi, those very familiar chants started all over the White House lawns. And uh, then, you know, uh, President Biden spoke, Prime Minister Modi spoke, but before that there were the national anthems of both the countries and uh, when the Janaganman was sung, uh, it was sung first, of course, because Prime Minister Modi was the guest and uh, the Star Spangled Banner was sung next, second, as is the norm, uh, you pay uh, your respects to the host, uh, to, the, to the guest first and then the host. So uh, the Indian uh, national anthem was played and you could hear thousands of Indians singing, you know, thousands of Indians singing Janaman Gan uh, on the White House lawns and it was an absolute goosebumps moment, ladies and gentlemen, it was, I, I'll never forget. I was, I was sitting in the guest room of Republic TV and I stood up and so did everybody else and we stood at Savdhan, we stood at attention and we sang along uh, with those people thousands of miles away on the lawns of the White House and truly a moment I'll never forget all my life. And uh, after that, you know, uh, they gave their speeches. They spoke spoke about uh, shared history, shared values. Uh, they spoke about how the countries identify with each other. And uh, you could see the bonhomie. You see, uh, let me analyze what this is. This is not simply something that has been crafted by diplomats. Because everything is crafted. You know, how many steps you'll walk, you'll go there, whether you'll shake hands, whether you'll embrace, whether you'll hug and who'll stand where, everything is choreographed because the world is watching and as a head of state, you know, this is not a movie where, you know, an actor messes up and then you say cut and then he can give the take again. Here, once it's wrong, it's wrong. Then it can never happen properly again. It gets captured for all, you know, for posterity. So, uh, diplomats especially are very, very careful because they have a very high power uh, or very high pressure job actually. High power of course, but high pressure also. And Mr. Taranjit Singh Sandhu, I, I'm just hoping that, you know, he gets a few days rest after Prime Minister Modi leaves. And by the time you see this video, I think Prime Minister Modi would have left for Egypt. Uh, I don't know his exact schedule, but I hope uh, uh, His Excellency, the Indian Ambassador to the US gets some rest. The past two, three months must have been harrowing for him and his team. There's a lot of hard work involved, you know, security arrangements, what the Prime Minister will do, whom he'll talk to, what are the various deals and the MOUs that are going to be signed and what will they discuss. It's a nightmare, actually. What we see is a sanitized version. You know what we all see on television and on social media is a sanitized version. Sanitized because 
the diplomats and the other officials, you know, from the National Security Council and everybody, they've been working day and night, day and night to make it successful. Ditto uh, from the American side, you know, their State Department and uh, their security establishment must have worked day and night, I'm sure, to make this event such a grand success. Now, after the 19 gun salute and after the national anthem, uh, they dispersed. Modi ji waved to the crowd. Uh, President Joe Biden waved to the crowd. They went inside for bilaterals where they discussed a lot of stuff here in the bilaterals. You know, they discussed a lot of stuff. They discussed uh, things like the internet. They discussed semiconductors. You know, the Artemis Accords, very interesting, which is actually again putting a man on the moon in 2025. And uh, India was invited to be part of the Artemis Accords, which India agreed to. So in 2025, uh, hopefully we'll have an Indian on the moon for the first time. And, uh, and uh, after that, they also discussed uh, quantum computing. They discussed uh, alternate energy. They discussed so many things where India and the United States can actually partner with each other and how they can take this entire thing forward. So, uh, you know, all these things happened. Uh, th there has been a lot of discussion about so many other things actually that, you know, investments in this and that and one semiconductor uh, company opening up in, in, in uh, Gujarat with an investment of 2.75 billion and about how M777, the upgraded version was offered to India to be made in India, how, uh, you know, other, uh, is you, you have heard about the Predator drones, you know, the Sea Guardians Predators, you heard about that, how India plans to purchase that, you heard about the engine, the G engine, which is going to be put into the Tejas and how this engine will enable Tejas to fly, uh, you know, and they will make this engine in India, 80 to 100 percent technology will be transferred to India. Uh, another thing called Striker. Striker is something that America has offered and Striker is a world-class weapons platform, which I think our mechanized infantry would love to use. So Striker is something that America has offered to India, make in India, complete transfer of technology, make and sell to the world. So all these things happened. After which Prime Minister Modi moved to address a joint session of the US Congress and uh, uh, see this video. You see the chance of Modi, Modi. I, I never imagined, I, I would have imagined this in a rally in India. Or I would have imagined Indians doing this because uh, Prime Minister Modi is a superstar. A mega star actually. But to see this happening inside Congress was an eye-opener and um, somebody, uh, you know, actually sent me a link to this video and that's how I... Because I had mid missed this part on television. On Republic, I, I didn't see this. I was outside, I think, somewhere. I missed it. but. Uh, there were chants of Modi, Modi, Modi inside the Congress. Somebody sent me this video and uh, fantastic, yeah, fantastic. I mean, and uh, Prime Minister Modi was speaking. He was speaking about his vision for India, his vision for the world. He spoke about peace. He spoke about development, how, how a development must reach the last man in the line. He spoke about all of that, his passion. But the strange part was the amount or the number of times he was interrupted by a standing ovation. The entire Congress got up and... You know, they applauded so many times and uh, it was wonderful to see. And after that, a question and answer session followed in which people asked uncomfortable questions. People asked about, you know, uh, uh, you know, the state of minorities in India. When people say minorities, when foreigners say minorities, they specifically mean Muslims because uh, they feel that they can, they can, you know, play around with this. Because I've never heard of Sikhs being referred to as minorities or Jains or Buddhists or Christians being referred to as minorities. I, I, maybe, maybe once in a while, maybe in passing, but consistently and constantly uh, when the foreign media refers to minorities or even large sections of the Indian media, when they refer to minorities, they specifically refer to Muslims. So they said that, you know, they could be facing problems in India and uh, there are various uh, threats to Indian democracy, which Prime Minister Modi said that for us, this is more civilizational than anything else. And it's enshrined in our constitution. We believe uh, that uh, we are the world's largest democracy. And if you call us a democracy, then there is no scope you know, for, uh, for, for uh, you know, discrimination in a democracy. Either you're a democracy or you're not a democracy. You're not sort of a democracy. Uh, also, he mentioned about the government schemes which reach everybody, the last man in the line. And it could be the, that man or woman can be from any religion, any caste, any creed, any ethnicity, any color, any language. It, it doesn't matter. You know, if, if water goes in a pipeline, it goes to a Hindu house and it goes to a Muslim house. If electricity goes, it goes to a Christian house and a Muslim house. You see, if gas goes, it goes to a Muslim house and a Hindu house. It doesn't matter. It absolutely does not matter. You know, your, your religion is inconsequential to the state. 
And this is what Prime Minister Modi tried to say, tried to explain to them. Joe Biden was asked a similar question, which Joe Biden very skillfully averted. And he said, yeah, nonsense, nothing doing. And he, he went his way. You know, uh, friends, uh, then uh, uh, there was dinner. Uh, after some time, after a host of other meetings, there was dinner, which was attended by, uh, you know, Tim Cook was there. Uh, Thomas Friedman was there, the author of the famous book, The Earth is Flat. Tim Cook, CEO of Apple. He was there in India a couple of months earlier. Now again, he's meeting Modi ji over, over, over dinner. There was Sundar Pichai, Apna Bhai Sundar Pichai. He was there and, and Manoj Knight Shyamalan, the famous director of uh, so many movies. You know, he makes these suspense, horror thrillers. Manoj Knight Shyamalan was there for dinner and there were other people also for dinner. And uh, Prime Minister Modi met all of them. And uh, then you see, there was a lot of objection also to the visit by some quarters. There were 60, 65 odd, uh, odd uh, you know, which we have covered earlier. There were people who said that, no, no, you should ask tough questions. They were telling uh, Joe Biden that ask tough questions to Prime Minister Modi and all. Joe Biden did nothing of that sort. And he said that Prime Minister Modi is an honored guest. There is no question of tough. You know, this whole talk down to somebody else. Now, this doesn't work with India. This doesn't work with India any longer. You're not speaking to some, you know, third world country which is in shambles. This is the Republic of India. And we carry a certain weight. And you have to respect that weight, right? Whether your name is Bernie Sanders or Ilan Omar or whatever your name is, it is inconsequential. We don't care, right? You can scream all you want. It doesn't matter, right? And then uh, speaking to Christian Amanpour, that famous uh, anchor from, from CNN, uh, Barack Obama said that the democratic structures all over the world are getting creaky and, uh, you know, especially India, he says India will break apart and all that. So Pakistanis were celebrating. Uh, Pakistanis, Don carried a prominent headline and Don said that, you know, this is what Obama said. There were, there were uh, opposition parties in India who were feeling very happy. Look what Obama said. I think uh, I think the opposition parties in India may have missed something here. And I think Pakistan obviously misses the bus every time. So I'll comment on Pakistan later. But, uh, you know, these opposition parties that were saying that, look at what Obama said. First of all, what Obama said is inconsequential. Obama is now a common citizen. What he says or does not say does not impact policy. Please understand, his number two was Joe Biden. Joe Biden is now the president. And Joe Biden has chosen to ignore what Obama said. This speaks volume, volumes of, of American foreign policy and American diplomacy. It speaks volume, volumes. Uh, he has chosen to ignore what Barack Obama said. That's number one. Number two, you know, I'd like to tell you that uh, Prime Minister Modi was denied a uh, visa. You're all well aware of that. When he was Chief Minister Gujarat, the Americans said, no, 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 we'll not give Modi a visa. And Modi ji said, fine, doesn't matter if you don't give me a visa. I'm not dying to come to the United States of America. Then in 2014, Modi ji became the Prime Minister and the United States of America said, well, well, welcome, welcome, we love you and all, come, come, come. So Modi ji went to America. Who was the president who gave him a visa? Or under whose regime was that visa given? It was Barack Obama, right? And Modi ji was welcomed into the White House. He met Michelle Obama, he met Barack Obama inside the White House. He had food with them. They, they had a joint press conference together. They, they sort of uh, uh, spoke to the media, they spoke to... Uh, or at least the media was there and they were speaking to each other and everything happened. Did at that point in time when he was the president of the United States, did Barack Obama mention this issue of minorities? Did he? No, he did not. He may have mentioned it in passing that both all of us believe that this should happen and this should happen and this should happen, but there was no direct insinuation. But today when he's out of power, he makes all these funny comments. So uh, he used to be called, you know, and people still call him no drama Obama in America because he's supposed to be, uh, he's uh, very, very, this thing, you know, poker faced. He said, no drama Obama. I would rather say full drama Obama. Now, Obama's, Obama's heart bleeds for Muslims. And I want to tell you something about uh, Barack Obama's track record. Yeah, you must all know this. Uh, so Obama's track record is something like that. And I'm reading from an article in LA Times, which I will request my uh, editor to put it up on screen. US military forces have been at war for all eight years of Obama's tenure. He was elected president twice. For all eight years of his tenure, the US military forces have been at war. The first two-term president with that distinction. So normally, if you're a two-term president, you try to, you know, 
roll back your forces. You try to roll back what? He's the first president with two terms who had war on his hands for all the two terms, all eight years. Obama's forces were fighting all over the world. He launched airstrikes or military raids in at least seven countries. Afghanistan, Iraq, Syria, Libya, Yemen, Somalia and Pakistan. Now, Afghanistan, Iraq, Syria, Libya, Yemen, Somalia and Pakistan is where Obama launched airstrikes. He launched strikes by helicopter gunships. He launched drone strikes. Thousands. Thousands of innocent people were killed. Sure, terrorists were also killed. But I remember both in tribal Pakistan and Afghanistan, wedding parties were wiped out. Yeah. Wedding parties were wiped out because, because Obama said, kill everybody. And all these countries, all these seven countries, I would like to name them again, just so that you and I don't forget. And it's on record. Afghanistan, Iraq, Syria, Libya, Yemen, Somalia, Pakistan. What is a similar, you know, what is so similar about all these seven countries? From Libya, Somalia to Pakistan to Afghanistan to Iraq to, to uh, all the other countries. Yemen, what is, what is, do you know what is the same? All are Muslim countries. Obama decides to launch airstrikes, attacks against seven Muslim countries. He kills thousands of Muslims, after which he goes and picks up the Nobel Peace Prize, right? He picks up the Nobel Peace Prize and then he lectures India on Muslim rights. Go figure. I, I haven't understood how that works. I still haven't understood how that works. You kill thousands of Muslims, right, who had nothing to do with your war. Sure, you could have killed Al-Qaeda and uh, Islamic State terrorists and nobody would complain. But common Muslims, wedding parties wiped out, kids killed, infants killed, houses bombed, innocent people killed. But uh, you get the Nobel Peace Prize and you walk away into the sunset and then in an interview, you talk about human rights. You talk about rights of minorities. How can you talk about the rights of Muslims, Mr. Obama? You kill thousands of them. Their blood is on your hands, right? And Pakistan getting all excited. Oh, Modi's, Modi was questioned by Obama. Modi was questioned by Obama. I want to ask the Pakistanis, are you crazy or something? Or am I missing something here? Have you forgotten about the Salala check post? Have you forgotten how American forces entered Pakistani airspace and killed 28 of your soldiers at the Salala check post? Using fighter jets, using Apache helicopter gunships? Who was the president of America at that time? It was Barack Obama. But then Pakistanis, you know, they've received money from Obama and they forget about Obama. All they care for is money, you know. You give them dollars and they'll forget every sin that you've ever committed. So I just wanted to remind everybody, you know, these great Obama fans roaming around in India also. President Obama. Obama has probably killed more Muslims than anybody else, apart from maybe George Bush, the senior or George Bush the junior. He's responsible for thousands of Muslim deaths. He gets the Nobel Prize. And then a Muslim country, Pakistan, supports Obama, who had killed their soldiers and who had killed hundreds of Pakistani civilians, innocent civilians. Pakistanis always cry, oh, we lost 80,000 lives in the war on terror. Don't you Pakistanis, don't you always cry and complain? We lost 80,000 lives, more than $100 billion worth of infrastructure. Who's responsible? It was you and the Americans. It was you and the Americans who started this. The Americans wanted space, you took money, you gave them space. 80,000 lives, it's on you, Pakistanis. And it's on presidents like Obama and Bush before him. You know, who messed up this entire world, war upon war upon war. And then you have the gall to walk up and actually take the Nobel Peace Prize. Yeah, God bless you. All right, coming to things Pakistani, you know, there, there, was, there was a lot of requests that, uh, a lot of requests that uh, major, you must have at least one news from Pakistan. So, uh, uh, here is one news from Pakistan. PS Shabazz Sharif presses West to be fair to needy countries. Developed countries should distribute resources fairly to help mitigate the suffering of developing nations and ensure world peace. Prime Minister Shabazz Sharif told a gathering of some 40 world leaders in Paris on Thursday. 
So while Prime Minister Modi was setting a world record, right, uh, addressing, you know, uh, a session of the Congress for the second time, an honor that has so far been given to only Winston Churchill, Nelson Mandela, and Zelensky. Zelensky, not because of his leadership, but because of the Ukraine war, otherwise not. But uh, there was the Pakistani Prime Minister begging for money. And in front of 40 countries, in front of 40 countries, he says, Oh, you know, you give money to your armies for wars, but you have no money for me. Please give me money. Prime Minister Modi is signing accords. He's talking about putting an Indian on the moon. He's talking about billions upon billions of dollars of in investment. He's talking about future technologies. And what is the Pakistani Prime Minister talking about? Show me the money. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, I come to the end of my video. Now is the time for Ask Major. So the question here is from Partha Datta. He says, Jai Hind, Jai Hind Partha Ji. The first question, after the war, USA, the USA compass has again turned towards Russia. Don't you think this will provide China breathing time for new strategy? We know how dangerous Chinese strategies are. And can Modi ji turn USA political compass towards China again? Actually, Partha ji, you are right. You know, uh, Russia was a distraction. But, you know, over a period of time, the Cold War mindset was dying down and suddenly Russia attacked Ukraine. So, yeah, attention is diverted there. But slowly and slowly, the world is pulling back because this Russia conflict will finish. You know what? I think the West has mismanaged this whole Russia-Ukraine conflict. Yeah, they've mismanaged it. In fact, uh, Vladimir Putin was waving a piece of paper. And on that piece of paper, he said, this is the treaty that we signed with the Ukrainians. They signed a treaty and they said, we want peace. This is immediately after the aggression, within a month of the Russian aggression. He says, where is that treaty? You signed a treaty and you violated that treaty. And he showed the piece of paper to the world. He says, you can have a look. They have signed this treaty. It is the Americans who did not allow peace because the Americans do not want peace. They want to use Ukraine as a proxy to keep on damaging, keep on damaging the Russians as far as possible. That is why they're giving all these weapons, these arms, this big money. That's what they're doing. So yeah, I think focus needs to turn away from the Russia-Ukraine war to China because China is the real threat. Russia can be managed. The second question here is by Rishi, hashtag Ask Major, Jain Major Sahib, Jain Rishi Ji. The weapons deal that PM Modi is about to finalize also includes F-21, which is going to be tailor-made for India by Lockheed Martin. My question is that will the aircraft manufactured only keeping one country in focus or meet international standards. So F-21 is not yet fixed. So there is no deal signed for the F-21. Okay. F-21 is supposed to be the upgraded version of F-16 and no deal for the F-21 has been signed as yet. Number one. Number two, while the platform remains the same, I'm just giving you a generic example. I'm not saying about India, but every country will have specific requirements. You know, India may have a requirement that I need for this aircraft to take off at 18,000 feet. Right? I need this aircraft to perform missions at this altitude or this is my requirement from this aircraft. I need these kind of weapons. Every country has a distinctive uh, strategic requirement and Air Force assets are strategic assets. They're not tactical assets. All Air Force fighter planes, these are hardcore strategic assets. They can go thousands of kilometers inside enemy territory, complete their missions and come back. So we are talking about top of the line capability. So uh, nothing has been signed on F-21, but whatever happens, I don't know. Uh, whatever happens, we'll see, but it will have to be modified for Indian conditions. While there is a basic international standard, right? The speed, the capacity, etc. But there will be like, maybe if India takes a plane, they, they will say that we want Brahmos here. Now, Brahmos is not a missile that, let us say, Japan would be using. But India will say we want Brahmos here or we want some other missile because these are our mission parameters. Japan will have different uh, mission parameters. India will have different mission parameters. Australia would be different. So every country is different and you have to tweak it a little to fix it according to that country. So ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed watching this video. And if you did, press like, subscribe to our channel and don't forget to press the bell icon. Jai Hind, Vande Matram, Bharat Mataki Jai.